First of all, I'd like to um, welcome everyone to the meeting and thank you for your preparation that you've already done. Um, I've had a look over the past uh, 24 hours at um, the work samples and um, it's great to see that our analysis of them is also um, developing and coming along. So just to recap, our um, objective for this particular meeting um, has been to have a look at over the period of the 17th of March to the 31st of March, the two-week period, at imp continued implementation of the um, um, 3H strategy, so the Here, Hidden, Head strategy to assist Emily in the areas of interpretive comprehension, um, so connecting ideas across text, applied comprehension, uh, connecting ideas and eventually synthesising her knowledge um, into um, knowledge and understanding in, with regards to a text and also um, inferential uh, reading and meaning. So in addition, as per our suggestions last um, meeting, we've also looked at connecting those levels of reading to our BOSTI's key directive terms in order to ensure that longitudinal um, benefits of ensuring the student can take this 3H strategy into senior schooling and deconstruct um, what she's reading in future um, uh, assessments or whatever it may be in classwork. Um, so, um, was it realistic, this goal? Uh, we said yes it was because she's already been using uh, this instructional strategy and it's been integrating the border studies terms um, in a further way. Um, so I'd like to ask uh, Andrew, uh, first of all, with regards to um, your work sample from religious education. So everyone, um, obviously you've got your Google Docs open. Did you want to explain some of the background to your um, lesson? Yep, sure. Um, this was one of the concluding lessons in uh, this unit of the New Testament. Uh, in this lesson the focus was for students to look at three key passages from the New Testament that provide direction for Christian living. Uh, they were asked to use the 3H strategy to analyse those passages and we had used the 3H strategy in previous lessons and done some work around developing questions, targeted questions that reflected each of the levels of the 3H strategy. Um, this strategy was modelled at the beginning of the lesson as a class. We created a graphic organiser on the board um, which broke the three levels of the 3H strategy down uh, into something similar to a Y chart. Uh, and in each section of the Y chart in a different colour we nominated some um, question stems or appropriate verbs for each of the levels of the 3H strategy, here, hidden and head. And students were also given a reference sheet, um, which also broke down the three levels of the 3H strategy. That was a reference tool for them when they went through the activity. Uh, once they had created, once they had done the task and analysed all three passages, those ideas were then fed back as a class and we consolidated some things on the board. Uh, whilst the activity was, was running, um, I moved around the room and provided individual assistance and feedback um, and notes in students' books uh, where necessary. Um, and Emily received this mode of feedback throughout the, the period of the lesson. Uh, if we look at the work sample, we can see in previous, uh, in previous examples of Emily's work, she struggled to access the hidden and the head categories. Uh, her level of inference and making connections has uh, been an area of concern. She's quite good at dealing with explicit content and answering explicit questions about text, but inferring meaning was difficult. Uh, however, in this final work sample, we can see that there is some evidence that she's beginning to infer meaning, meaning particularly the hidden uh, category and in the head category. Um, in the first uh, state, the first scripture reference, which was the new commandment, in the hidden area, um, Emily states that Jesus is giving this new commandment because he knows he won't be with them much longer and he'd like them to continue on with the work that he had started. Um, in the passage itself, it mentions that Jesus would be leaving them soon, uh, but the the reasoning behind him doing what he was doing is not explicitly stated within the passage. And she's also been able to connect um, different ideas throughout the text to construct that meaning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So she's started to infer the reasons as to why this meeting of the disciples is taking place and why Jesus is saying what he's saying. But what you're working on is being able for her to be able to do that using more detail from the text. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, at Definitely. the moment you can see from the sample that it's not in as much detail as yeah. or as analytical as the further that still requires further development. Yeah, so her feedback is around I can see that there's some inference here, maybe think of these things, stretch your thinking this way, those sorts of things. She does it also in the head category where she makes 
good application for the the lesson of the text to a real world example but again uh, doesn't necessarily specify how she's come to that conclusion and what information she's drawn from to come to that and conclusion. And Andrew, I think with the way you've um, shaped the questions there, you're not giving her the answer, you're in fact yeah. uh, giving her some prompts so that she can further develop um, her responses with, with more detail yeah. and more under, uh, demonstrated understanding, which yeah. is good. She does similar in the Beatitudes at the hidden level. She makes reference to the fact that Jesus is standing on a mountain. Um, and her comment is that he's standing on the, on the mountain because he wants the disciples to follow him and listen to what he's saying and these sorts of things. Um, she's implying or inferring the meaning that comes with him standing on the position of a mountainside and what that means. Um, again, that's not explicitly mentioned within the text. Um, and again, I've, asked, I've said, you've made some good points. Tell me what you think the significance of the mountain is. So trying to tease out that extra detail is the next step, but there is a layer, layer of inference that wasn't necessarily there in previous work samples, which so wasn't there's been some element There has been some growth, yeah. At both the hidden and the head level? Uh, more so hidden than head. Yep, so um, more so the um, inferred yeah. um, or inferential comprehension. Yeah, her um, the answers that she's giving at the head level are still quite uh, generic or um, that they lack the detail that you would, you would need. Um, but definitely at the hidden level, she's she's starting to show signs of, of inference. So in many ways, it's around the fact that she doesn't have that prior knowledge. Yeah, and in some and cases... What, what she's drawing on. Mm, yeah, and in some in cases, the, the it's an awareness of prior knowledge that she does have that she may not necessarily know she has, um, that, that she can draw yeah. on that. So making her aware of that, which is why I've asked the prompted questions about what do you think the significance of a mountain might be and getting sure. a guess. So around that. that for at the, the level of um, the applied comprehension, it's um, interesting to see triggering or unlocking um, the prior learning <coughs> is something mm. that is needed to access that level of reading as well. And yeah. So the student actively sees the connections between what they're doing um, right at that particular moment or what they're reading and also their prior learning. Mm. It's interesting to see in Michael's work sample from um, English, you've had a little bit of a different experience, maybe in relation to the stimulus that's been used. <coughs> So um, thank you, Andrew, for um, what you've just looked at. I think also we'll discuss collectively the outstanding challenges that Emily is still having, um, but we might move on to um, our next work sample from English and have a look at, you've used quite a different piece of stimulus um, to um, RE. So it was part of the unit on representation of women. So it was... Um, a video clip of Emma Watson addressing the UN on the He For She campaign and again focusing on the explain, that term explain. Um, after a discussion about feminism and what it is and what it means to them, showing the clip and then having these four questions which again hit the explain um, level. First question was where they had to identify the um, main idea of the campaign, what the purpose of the whole campaign was. Uh, Emily was able to do that quite quite uh, clearly. Um, sorry, just to stop you there, were you in the, in terms of the gradual release of responsibility model, um, so you obviously was, had the modelled the question and then you shared it through a discussion, discussion. and then guided yep. students so, in that's right. perhaps a answering together. And they also had time together. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the Excellent. whole way through. So they did yep. some sharing and then Yep. Fantastic. So her levels of um, responses at the first question, you were saying explain the term feminist. They look to be um, drawing connecting ideas from across the text. Well, the, yeah. The, well, the first one was the identify, where they had mm -hmm. to identify the, the purpose of the campaign. She was yep. able to do that clearly. Sorry, question two. Uh, question two was the one where they had to um, explain their understanding of feminism or feminist. Mm -hmm. And again, she was able to do that uh, quite clearly. So in that example of explain, she was able to, to be um, correct there. But in the next one, where they're asked to explain um, some of the rights that they have as a woman, she went back to the just identifying characteristics. She wasn't able to make that link then to what was in Emma Watson's address. For example, as you can see, she says some of the rights um, 
uh, that men and women should be paid equally mm -hmm. and then she's left it at that whereas to make that connection it would have been good if she would have been able to cite something that Emma said I think she mentions um, you know 77% uh, no, no women in in uh, CEO positions are only earning 77% that of men in the same position. So even integrating that supporting yeah. evidence with greater detail. Yeah, so that, that would have been. So in that question, it was back to just identifying characteristics. wasn't able to make the, yeah. the uh, connection. It's interesting with um, the, the final question you've got there. Um, explain the impact of Watson's closing line, if not me, then who? Um, if not now, then when? Um, it's she's connecting ideas that, from broader in this one, experience. Yeah, in this one, the connections there. So um, yeah, she was very, um, very uh, clearly able to say that um, it's it's an appeal to every young woman to make make the change. It's up to them. And the fact and that she could use the word inspiration. That's right. Which wasn't something that came out of the out of the speech when you watch it shows that she is drawing on on that prior knowledge and, and the effect that it had on her as a, as a viewer. Yeah. So that was really good. Um, collectively based upon these work samples, um, the strengths of Emily's work samples in relation to um, inferential comprehension and also applied comprehension, um, sort of to summarise and correct me um, from with you would like to add anything as well. So we've seen over the past two weeks, she's demonstrated that increased ability to read between the lines, yes, um, from previous weeks, um, in response to perhaps um, the 3H strategy. So um, she's able to formulate more detailed responses that connect meaning across the text, uh, and then for demonstrate aspects of that um, applied comprehension. So over the past two weeks, um, She's expressed that ability to pull out relevant evidence um, from the text and integrate it into a response, but it's at varying degrees of um, detail. Um, perhaps something that um, she needs to continue to work on at both levels um, is looking at ongoing challenges of unpacking the border studies or the BOSTI's key directive terms consistently. So explain, account, etc. Um, although using explain over the past few weeks in the instruction strategy has resulted in um, uh, I guess uh, benefits in terms of depth and detail of responses. Um, building Emily's capacity to integrate supporting evidence um, we were talking about from a text and um, we were also linking in previous um, meetings this ideal of, idea of using teal as a structure in which to formulate responses so complementing existing um, strategies in our classroom with new instructional strategies um, and then having a look at there was something that both of you have mentioned in previous lessons and also um, in conversations that Emily needs to continue to build that capacity for self-reflection. When you spoke to her about demonstrating a skill, her knowledge of what skill she's actually demonstrating is still progressing, correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, this is case management meeting three. Um, and what do you, um, what are some perhaps suggestions uh, with regards to uh, Emily's ongoing, um, is there an ongoing need for case management with regards to, um, uh, sorry, inferential and uh, obviously applied comprehension, interpretive <coughs> comprehension, applied comprehension, or um, obviously it doesn't end here, but is there um, a need for ongoing case management mm. from your perspectives? I would say that she's made, there's evidence that there has been improvement. Um, in the area of inf in the area of inference, um, at least I think there's there's the call for ongoing strategies to support Emily. Um, for myself, I would look at more targeted feedback. Uh, we spoke about allowing her to be more, or helping her to be more reflective, and that feedback helps her do that. Asking her why she's come up with that idea, or even uh, occasionally she'll state something but leaves the idea unjustified or unfinished. So even putting in a simple because or you know, and getting her to finish the thought and complete the thought. Yeah. Little things like that I think will, will go a long way to help her. So some of our recommendations is that um, in the areas of inferring meaning and applied comprehension that she's experienced growth in her understanding and application of the skill as evidenced through her work samples. Um, her ability to synthesise, apply knowledge and understanding to the interpretation of a text is still an area of future growth. So Emily continues to require ongoing engagement 
um, especially with the BOSTI's key directive terms, but um, situated within the context of the instructional strategy that um, we've implemented through 3H. Um, something that I also wanted to discuss is circulating these um, ongoing strategies with uh, the remainder of uh, Emily's teachers in order to ensure that um, there's that exponential sort of um, uh, having a look at teachers uh, using that practice, um, the practice that the class and also Emily herself um, has, has become used to using as a tool to deconstruct text and to promote those um, higher order thinking skills and uh, reading skills as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important, the consistency of practice so all the teachers are using it. So. Yeah, and developing that common language amongst common the staff language, to discuss yeah. students' yep. work, etc. So, Are you going to give some feedback to Emily now? What's yes. going to happen now? So um, my role now would be to um, visit Emily um, during one of her classes with um, the teacher's permission and, and have a discussion over her progress over the um, past weeks. I have um, intermittently throughout the process, mm -hmm. um, but to mention that it doesn't end here. It's part of the learning journey mm -hmm. and that you know consulting with regards to this specific skill um, is something that's going to be ongoing. It would be good to celebrate the successes that she's been able to demonstrate and, and to talk with her you know, about the great things that she's been able to, to do. Thank you very much. That's really good.